This is the plaintiff, Khalid Onawala. He says he rented a house along with a roommate from the defendant, and the woman kicked him out and gave him only three days to move. The defendant was mad about an overnight guest staying in the house, but it wasn't his overnight guest, it was his roommate's. The horrible defendant refuses to return his security deposit for no reason, and he's here suing for the $700 he's still owed. This is the defendant, Vivian Scott. She says the sneaky plaintiff tried to move someone into the house under her nose. So before things escalated, she told him he had to move out. She returned $1,000 of his security, kept 350 of it because he didn't return the key, and she had to change the locks. So she owes nothing. She's accused of not getting it right. All parties, please raise your right hand. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case in the docket, the plaintiff rented a house from the defendant and says she kicked him out with three days' notice, and she accused him of bringing in an overnight guest, which he denies. But she says he was trying to move that person in. It's the case of sleepover, creepover. Mr. Onaola, you are suing Ms. Scott, your former landlord, for two times the 350 that she withheld from your security deposit. Yes, ma'am. Because according to you, she kept the money wrongfully and never sent you a notice about that uh, yes. in writing. So tell me what happened. All right, so I moved in. Well, I paid my security deposit April 25th um, of 2018. I moved in May 1st, and then I was given a notice to vacate the premises on May 20, May 30th. May 30th? Yeah, if I'm not, yeah, before the month was even up. Like, okay. I just had, like... They, just, they gave me, like, a warning, like, a forewarning on May 25th. Saying right? what? Just saying, like, you went against the lease by, by having an overnight by having an overnight guest. Because your lease says you can't have an overnight guest? Without um, getting in contact with management first. Okay. Now, this is... You were renting out what? I was renting out an apartment. So, like, a whole floor in a house, rather. All right. And then who lives... How many floors are there to the house? Um, two, if I'm... And then who lives on the other floor? On the other floor was her son, AK, um, slash, like, manager, like, property manager. So the son lives on the top. Do you live there, too? No. Okay. The son lives on the top, and, and the bottom was being rented out to you. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So you get a notice on May 25th saying what? Saying that I was going against the lease by having an overnight guest, which was not and true. And what did you do with that notice? Um, I let her know that I didn't have any overnight guests, and then on top... Who did? It was my roommate. Had okay, it's your roommate. That's, yeah. What do you think? They, what your roommate does in the apartment doesn't matter? Yeah. But what I don't understand is you moved out then immediately? No. So that was my first warning, the 25th. And then three, two days later, um, they told me to move out. I was given three days to move out. That was my that first. That was your first warning. Was there another event? No. Okay, yeah. so just... They didn't like the way you communicated, I guess, or something? And like my face, something. I don't know what was going so on. So they gave you a three-day notice, and then you, you and then followed I vacated, it. So yeah. you lived out the one month that you'd paid, and this is all about the security deposit. Yes. Now, uh, what was the problem? Why did, why did he get a three-day notice he, in his first month? <clears throat> he was sharing the apartment with someone else. Okay. And his roommate said that he tried to move someone in wow. the apartment. And but then, he, wait, what? Who, the roommate told you that he tried, that the, the plaintiff moves, tried to move someone else in? Yeah, and he was not comfortable with it. Okay. So I said before it escalates, I will ask him to leave. So you ask him to leave, mm -hmm. and much to your surprise, he left. Yeah, no, yeah. I'm not surprised. I'm he left. surprised because most <laughs> times that you file three day notice, they go, ha, ha. They put it as a doily under, at least those are the cases I see, so. under their beard. All right, so he leaves and then the other guy stays? Yes. And was the other guy on the lease? Yes. So he just paid the rent? Yes. Entirely? Mm -hmm. Did he move, so, did he get a ro another roommate or anything? Yes, he got another roommate, which is, I'm very happy with them. I have no problems. And does your lease actually say no overnight guests? Unless you contact me. Okay. And why is that in there? That's a little unusual. Because a lot of times people says, okay, I'm having an overnight guest, and the guests stay until a month, two months, and you hear they're not leaving because they have squatters' right. And I didn't want that to happen. So before it escalated, I said, 
none of that. Okay. So can a landlord tell a tenant, you can't have overnight guests? I feel like it's a normal part of having an apartment. They shouldn't allow it, they, they shouldn't be able to block that. But can they? I think they can because the landlord is the one that like actually owns the property, so he's so able you, to. Like, you can make an that kind of a rule where you can't bring a guest in overnight once. I'm just wondering how the landlord knows that there's a guest overnight. Well, if it's a house, say, then they're both living together. I don't know. Going inside the courtroom. Now you kept three hundred and fifty dollars of his security deposit yeah, because he was supposed to return the key. I gave him five days business days to return the key. He didn't return the key. So I had to get a locksmith. The locksmith. When you say you gave him five business days, did you send him some kind of letter or something? Yeah, where you gave he him five got business a notice days? to return the key. Say it again. Yes, he got an email from my son, who is, was my property manager. Okay, may I see and the email? Let me see. I don't. Let me see if I have that copy. Did you get an email from her son saying no. return the key? No. Well, why did you take the key with you to begin with? I thought I was going to give it to somebody, and I couldn't get Why don't get you give contact. it to your roommate? Did you not know your roommate was staying? No, I didn't I know. Don't have of that course one. you did. You know your roommate's staying because you see that it's yeah. May 31st, and mm. he's not packing. Yeah. Yeah, so you know the roommate's staying. But so didn't, why don't you just know. leave the key behind or put it under the mat? Or put it under the, the, the landlord's mat up top. He wasn't, the son moved out by that time. He moved out like in the middle of the month, so it was so nobody. So why did you just leave it in the mailbox? Leave it under the mat. Why didn't you do that? I didn't think to do that, Judge. Okay, well Judge, then she the, had to change. Excuse me. Yeah. The door has a, the mailbox can be dropped inside the apartment, so he could have threw the key inside the apartment. Oh, it's like one apartment. of those little yes. like things yes. like in Harry Potter? Yes. And so it comes in like yes. that? And, and, and of my youth, really, because we had that when I was young in New York. But so uh, he could have done that. He could have dropped the key. Yeah, why'd you do that? Why didn't you do that? Yeah, I didn't think to. Okay, to you didn't do think, the, yeah. but now you're not thinking caused her to change the locks because there's a guy out there who's angry with a key. So See, she needs to protect. I emailed her. her to ask, and I wasn't angry. I was, I was, I emailed her to ask, like, what do I do going forward? And they weren't. When did you like, email her? You didn't like, right email me. Hold on, don't me. talk to him Sorry. directly. Go ahead. Right after I moved out. I okay, said, let me what's see your the process email. going forward? Yeah, I got the email. Did you find the email from your son? No, no, he was emailing my son. He was in contact with me because my son was managing the property for okay, me. Okay, but you said your son sent him an email yeah. asking him to return the key he, and giving him yeah, five business days. I let was me looking see that through email. my paper, but I couldn't find it. Well, who writes this email? Your son? Thank you for the, taking the time out of your busy schedule to read and respond to my email. I've spoken to Lauren and been informed that you failed to return the keys. Please be, who's Lauren, your roommate? No, Lauren no. is her son. Lauren is my son. Acting as the property manager. Okay, I, so this is you then writing. I've spoken to Lauren, I've been informed you failed to return the keys. Please be advised you will be charged a fee for that. Please be advised that you will be notified when check is mailed. I understand the fee to replace the key, you said on June 19th. To an extent. To an extent. Well, yeah. what extent? Just not to the 350 extent? Yeah, like yeah. 350. Yeah, however, I left the apartment completely empty, so I don't agree with any leftover item. Why was it so expensive? Did you pay a locksmith? A locksmith. May I see the receipt from the locksmith? Okay, who are these texts with? And who supplied these texts to me? You did? Yeah. Can I see them in your phone? Yes. This is her son calling and uh, threatening me. Okay, on February 5th or 8th, I, that's when they must have gotten service. What's the issue with the small claims court crap, your son says to him? And your, he doesn't answer, and a week later, your son says, I'm gonna make your life miserable. You're a scammer. I'm gonna make sure you go to jail. Tuck your Male body part between Leader. your legs, you, and then he uses a word I won't repeat. Uh, in any event, um, so it's all about this 350. Um, yeah, it's, uh, I mean, it's hefty. I know why you feel like, what? But <laughs> on the other hand, here's the importance of leaving the keys behind, right? Yeah. Um, because you're not allowed to leave, to take the keys with you. When you do that, that's what the landlord's going to do, change the locks. Mm. Um, so I'm sorry, but my verdict in this case is for the defendant. That's my verdict. Good luck, folks. <laughs> yeah. So it didn't work out for the plaintiff. You are going to have to pay for the, uh, if you step over here, please, you're going to have to stay, pay her for the, you know, replacing the lock, you know? She was, you know, mad about somebody staying overnight in the apartment. Yeah, I never had an overnight guest. None of this makes sense, but it is what it is. I'm grateful for life.
Well, that's a good way to put it. Thank you very much. Grateful for life. <laughs> Ms. Scott, let me ask you about that. Were you upset that he had an overnight guest? No, he, he was trying to move someone into the apartment. You mean permanently? Yeah. Not just because you can't yeah. rent an apartment, so you can't yeah. have somebody overnight. No, right? well, he was trying to move someone in, and I know how that works. Once they bring someone in, and 30 days, then they said they are a squatter, and you can't get them out. So before that happened, I deal with it right away. So you've learned the hard way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you get you. the money back for it. Okay. Thank, thank you very you. much, Matt. Okay. The lady who knows what she's doing, Harvey, what do you think? Okay, I mean, look, Doug, there are actually protected classes, you know, sex, religion, race, sexual orientation. Otherwise, um, landlords are allowed to, to say that. You can't have an overnight guest. It's in the lease. Either move in or not. And it's their option. That will do it for this case. Litigants for the next case on the way into the courtroom right now.